All right, students. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, we have a new topic for today, and that is final accounts for sole traders. Final accounts contain basically two things. One is income statement, and another one is SOFP statement of financial position. So today we are going to learn about income statement. Now, what does an income statement means? Income statement means uh, it can calculate that how much profit a business has earned or how much loss a business has suffered during any particular financial year. So basically, income statement is prepared just to make sure to calculate income and expenses for the period and to calculate profit or loss for the period. So let us uh, first study the format. How can we make an income statement? We'll be starting with the heading. Normally, headings are given in an examination question. So we can skip that. And if the heading is not given, we must always put the heading. First of all, the name of the owner in this case, Mr. A.R.D., that is me. Then income statement for the year ending. And year is ending on 31st December 21. Okay, I am making this income statement for the year 21. So income statement is always made in the two columns. And these two columns does not represent debits or credits. These are just for the presentation purpose. So anything that needs to be adjusted plus or minus we are going to write in the first column and the final answers we are going to write in in the second column first of all we have sales also known as revenue so sales or revenue means uh, the goods that we have sold uh, the selling price of the goods uh, that we have sold all together in any particular year is the sales revenue okay then uh, maybe uh, the goods that we have sold some of the goods are returned back by the customers these are known as return inwards, also known as sales return. And sometimes examiner also refers to as goods returned by customers. So if the customers are returning faulty goods or maybe because they haven't ordered that. So therefore, we need to deduct it from the sales in order to get the net sales. So usually examiner does not label this amount net sales. So we are going to leave it that way. Then after sales becomes cost of sales. Cost of sales means the goods that we have sold for this amount, how much that actually cost the business. Okay, so this is cost of sale. We are going to start with the opening inventory. Opening inventory means this is the inventory that we had at the start of the year. In this case, if the year is being ending on December 21, then it must have been started on 1st January 21. Now, this uh, when this new year started, 2021 we had this much inventory in our uh, outlet or shop and then we uh, bought some new inventory we need to add the purchase of inventory okay whenever we are buying inventory we are going to uh, write purchase so we need to add up this inventory then uh, the way that we uh, directed return inward from the is from the sales value the same way we are going to apply here and we are going to direct return outward from the purchase value Return outward, also known as purchase return, or sometimes examiner referred to as goods return to supplier. Okay, because this time we are returning goods to our suppliers. Why? Because the goods are faulty, the goods are or not of the required standard. Therefore, we return the goods to uh, whom to our suppliers. Then we need to add one more thing. One, uh, this is carriage inwards. Now, what is carriage? Carriage uh, means transportation cost. Now, there can be two types of carriages here. One is carriage inwards and another one is carriage outwards. Carriage inward, dear students, mean whenever we are buying goods from our suppliers. So the transportation costs that needs to be incurred whenever we are buying goods. So it is known as a carriage inward and the cost that needs to be incurred whenever we are selling goods to our suppliers. It is a carriage outward. So carriage inward is always recorded uh, here. In a cost of sales, uh, it needs to be added in a cost of sales and carriage outward is always uh, added to the expenses. OK, so carriage inward belongs to purchases and carriage outwards belongs to delivery cost. That is uh, whenever we are delivering goods to the customer's premises, then we need to add one more thing. Import duty. If we are importing some goods from any other country, so obviously imports are right now banned in Pakistan because of the shortage of the uh, US dollar. 
So whenever we are going to import goods from uh, any other country, so the government uh, needs uh, charges some duty on it, some levies on it. So therefore, uh, we are discouraged to import because import is not good for any country. So in any case, import basically adds up to our cost. Therefore, import duty is added in this cost of sales. Then we have drawing of goods. So drawing normally doesn't come here in an income statement. Drawing normally comes in a statement of financial position. But drawing can come in the income statement when uh, only when when the examiner says that the drawing belongs to the goods. Whenever we are drawing out goods from the business, so the entry would be drawing account would be debited and purchase account would be credited. Okay. Uh, for example, we have a mobile phone shop, a gadget shop, and we took out iPhone 14 for our personal use. Then therefore it is a drawing of goods. So the entry would be with a drawing would be debited and the purchase account would be credited. Okay, then we have a closing inventory. Closing inventory, dear students, means the inventory that is left at the end of the year. Now, uh, if the year ends, it's not necessary that our entire store is empty and we have sold all of the goods and we think that we'll be buying new goods in the new year. It's not the case. Okay, now at the end of the year, the goods that are left over would be sold in the next accounting year. Therefore, it is being deducted. Therefore, we, we are not going to charge these goods this year. Okay, so we are going to deduct that in order to find cost of sales. Now, after adding and subtracting all of these, the uh, positive values are being added and the negative values, which I've written in brackets, need to be deducted in order to find cost of sale. So usually we write cost of sale two times, one as a heading and another one uh, we need to label the uh, cost of sales final value. Okay, so the goods that we have sold for this amount actually cost us this amount. So if we deduct both of these values, we are left with the amount known as gross profit. Now, why does this is known as a gross profit? This is known as a gross profit because this is not a final profit. Okay, there needs to be adjust two other things in it. One is add other income. Now, now what is other income? Now, my dear students, the main business for Mr. ARD is buying and selling goods. And what happens if Mr. ARD or the ARD's business earns some other income that does not belongs to the trading? So uh, any income that is other than that is earned from buying and selling of goods is known as other income and it can be rent received. For example, uh, a portion of our shop, we have given it to the rent or to some other party. And this is known as rent received. Rent receive is basically an income for the business. Uh, either ex examiner writes rent receive or rent receivable, it means the same thing. Then commission receive or commission receivable. Uh, for example, uh, we are doing part time property business. Um, uh, many people do it here in the Pakistan. Whether we have some other business, maybe clothing business, and uh, during our part time, we uh, free time, we uh, do provide some uh, services. Uh, and on that we earn some commission okay or this is known as a commission receive or it can be discount receive so anything has a received in the end is basically an other income discount receive uh, it means that whenever we are uh, paying our suppliers earlier than promised then it is a discount receive for the business then there is one another thing decrease in provision for doubtful debt you have already studied what are the provision for doubtful debt means now before going through this topic final accounts you need to go through all of the previous topics relating to adjustments such as bad and doubtful debts then we have depreciation then we have accruals and prepayments all of these topics are necessary in order to prepare this income statement if we are preparing the income statement uh, as in the full fledged income statement in the examination question okay if the doubtful debt is decreased during the year then it is an other income and if the doubtful debt has increased during the year then it is an expense then we have debts recovered also known as bad debt recovered okay we studied it previously that if one of our customers uh, was gone bankrupt and now he came forward and they gave us a full or partial amount then they, this is known as debts recovered and it is an income for the business now in gross profit we need to add other income 
Now the total amount that we are left with, uh, it, it, it is a no name figure. It doesn't have any name. This value, gross profit at other income, it's a no name figure. But uh, normally we need to calculate it. Sometime examiner gave one mark, award one mark for this value, no name figure. Now, uh, after this, we need to deduct expenses. Now, all of the expenses that are necessary to do the business, we need to deduct it here. Uh, either it is irrecoverable debt. Irrecoverable debt, when the customer fails to pay us the amount due, it is an expense also known as bad debt previously. New one name is irrecoverable debt. Then there is an increase in provision for doubtful debt. If the customer, uh, if the doubt has been increased during the year, this means uh, there is a doubt that more customers will not able to pay us. So therefore, it is an expense. If the doubt is increasing, it's an expense. And if it's decreasing, it's an other income. Now, the discount received was basically income and discount allowed is an expense. When our customers are paying us earlier than they promise, then it is a discount allowed. It is an, it is an expense for the business. We already discussed what does the carriage outward means. Carriage inward belongs to the purchases and carriage outwards uh, relates to the delivery of goods to customers and it is charged as an expense. Now there can be rent, it can be electricity or some other expenses, sundry expense or journal expense or miscellaneous expense. These are all charged as an expense. Now the depreciation, we have already learned what does depreciation of non-current assets mean. So these are also charged as an expense. If we add up all of these, the total expenses and this needs to be deducted from this no name figure. Uh, the final value that we are left with is a profit for the year or loss for the year. Previously, it was known as a net profit, but uh, recently the examiner has changed the terminology and it, it is now written profit for the year or loss for the year. If the final value is positive, then it would be a profit for the year. And if instead is a negative value, then it would be known as a loss for the year okay now in the next lesson inshallah we'll be solving solving a past paper question relating to income statement